All right, in this video, I get to actually go my very first flight ever in a Highlander. I just met Gary, the owner of this plane behind us. Yesterday, he invited me to go on a flight here at Oshkosh, just around in the pattern and things like that, just to get a good feel of what the Highlander feels like in, inside and see if it fits me well and see if it's something that I'm gonna be interested in. So, let's get out and go for a couple laps. This is a 2012 Highlander when it was built, and what I've done to this make it more capable is I've added a leading edge slat on the front wing. Okay. That allows to have a little even more camber, so I can land about 150 feet, maybe less, and okay. take off on that uh, single pilot. And then what I've done where I'm landing in really rough terrain and give it a higher angle of attack is I've added really tall um, landing gear uh, from Tony at TK1 and then his shocks on there. So you basically come in and drop it, where you're coming in really slow, real slow, so you don't have very, very little horizontal movement. And then you can pull power or come in with a steep approach is what I normally prefer off airport. Okay. And then just you come in, have the right speed, and it just drops on the mains and all that suspension just absorbs it all off. And then we have you know, big tires is the other part is so you have a lot of absorbing the bumps like rocks or landing on gravel bars or sandbars where you're not digging in. Right. So then I've also added a big tire on the back and suspension on the back as well. By yourself with just an average amount of fuel, what's an average um, approach speed that you would see? So I generally come in about 45 knots, and then what I typically as like an approach with a lot of safety margin, I stall somewhere around 30 knots um, on the ground. And then typically I'll slow it down to 38 knots, kind of, you know, there's no fence of course, but you would sure. fall over the fence. Yeah, sure. and And then, um, you'll be rounding out and you're going to be in that 30, 32 knots range, right, when you're in ground effect. And that's when you're pulling back further and you might float maybe 20 feet and yeah. then it falls on the mains. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's really, that's really slow and short. Awesome. Yeah. What's that? It's like flying a 152 again. It is. It's exactly like inside. It's yeah. definitely that. Clear. Was it pretty nerve wracking coming in for the first time into here? The first time on the ultralight field definitely was because it's a blind corner. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So you don't even see the strip till you come around the, uh, any, any, uh, until you see the uh, tree. Okay. You, that's your first time of seeing the strip. So that's a little nerve wracking. It's nine, 900 feet, 800 feet, I think, okay. after the uh, displaced threshold. Yeah. And these come down really, really quick. Airspeed alive, oil pressure's in the green. We're looking at nice right about now. Yeah, it was not too bad. A little bit of ground effect we're staying in. Didn't have full power. And we climbed up 50 knots. Amazing having two people, how much it performs different. Oh yeah. And we'll kill the flaps now. And we say about 1100. Now you hear the Rotax, if you haven't flown, have you flown in one? I've never been in a plane with the Rotax. So you have to get used to the RPM. That's yeah, like, that's exactly what I was just going to yep. ask. It's like, did it take a while to get used to just having it screaming up there? Yep, yep. And then the shutdown is uh, disconcerting. It goes, oh, oh. <laughs> So, that's the other one. Did it take a while to get used to just kind of the lightness of this? It did. It took about a day. In fact, I actually recommend, like I, I did initially pattern work in it. That was dumb. Oh, okay. I think it's better just to go fl fly with someone. Okay. Get used to the controls for like three, four hours. Yeah. And then and then try and do some landings. Okay. Because then you're used to the, uh, you know, the feel of it more. Yep. How much it takes. So we come around this tree here. We're gonna come in a little differently than I normally do alone because uh, we're a little heavier. So uh, we'll, okay. we'll play a little, we'll try to just drop it and drop it. So we come around the oak tree, that's the other place you come in here. Get down the flap out of range, 20 flaps. We'll just give it full now. And I'm gonna, I usually do like just 50 like this when we're in the pattern or something, or even on a long approach, and then we'll drop it to 45. And we'll see here, now we can't go past the road. When I first came in, I didn't know you could be this high and come down, so it was real low. 
And we'll slow to 45. Get down. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna float. It's, it's windy today. Breezy. Get a little bit of lift. All right, clear on the right. Now, did you have any tailwheel experience before you got this? About, um, about 10 hours. That was, that was all, I mean, I was fine. I could, wheel landings were my nemesis in the beginning. Okay. So, everybody's saying you have to get at least 25 hours before you even bother trying to get insurance. That sounds right. I, I did it lower, and I just did a six month policy. Oh, okay. So you do a six month, you get your, you know, build up hours and that'll help. I didn't find getting 24 hours helped much. If it, it was oh, more, they actually said more in the 100 hour range is when it was going to matter. But, oh, okay. But that's all right. So. Now, does this sit about the same as a Kit Fox? Or Kit Fox is going to be lower. Uh, it, it has less of an angle of attack. This okay. one's got a bit more extreme angle of attack. Okay. So it'll sit lower. Plus the whole airplane will be lower on a Kit Fox. Okay. That's um, if you have the Grove gear or if, let's say, I know I've seen a couple of them that have a little bit bigger gear Yeah, as well. if, if you get the, so uh, if you can get a Kit Fox pretty close to this plane with the STI wing. Okay, yeah. It has an under camper wing. If you look at the wing, yep. you'll notice how it's under that big extreme under camper. That helps me with, that's what helps us fly slow. Okay. And climb well. Uh, it also makes it go slow. Or I lose up at about 10 miles an hour slower than them. But oh, the, S really? the STI wing Kit Fox is about the same. Okay. And then the STI, they'll also put the Cobain gear. Yep. And in fact, Tony makes gear for that, about the same as this. Um, so TK1. And uh, that'll give you the same kind of characteristics as this. Okay. Yep. Fr frankly, um, I, I do love, I like the Highlander better. I chose it for, it's a little bit lower stall, a little lighter or a better off airport and the baggage in the room was the other reason. Yeah, there is quite a bit more baggage. Yeah, I, I won't not. Kit Fox is a great plane. Highland's a great plane. Super Stoll's a great plane. They're, you know, frankly, if you get any of them, you'll be, you know, anybody will be I happy think, with them. Yeah, so. and I think too, it's gonna be getting one and then doing what I wanna do and realizing is is this what I really like? Is, this, right. is, is this a good fit? Or is it maybe too much for what I'm looking for? I don't really wanna go quite that off airport or. Yep. On uh, the roll. Airspeed's alive. Oil pressure's in the green. Uh, hit the ground effect a little bit. There we go. Climb about 50 knots. Yeah, it does get warm in here pretty quick with all this. Well, that's why I usually have the, the cover on. Yeah. But I thought it'd be nice to just be able to look around and see. So I don't usually take it down except for, like if, we're, if, we're, if we're flying like gravel bars with other folks, this is where it's nice. You can, as you're taking your wing down, yeah. you can look around and see. Well, thanks for bringing me out. I sure Abs do appreciate it. This Absolutely. Great, for sure. Gives me a good feel. Good feel. What, it's, yep. what, it's, what it's like and... Yep. We'll just go full flaps right away. Got gas. And we'll just pull the power back. And you can't go past that road either. That's the other. Yeah, that makes it a bit difficult. Makes it a little spicy. And you usually get a bit, uh, turbulence mechanical here. So that, that's, I actually enjoy that a lot, but a lot of folks don't. And there we go. You found that you need the, the dual caliper brakes? Yep. I use them for, uh, so I can lock the wheels up on grass. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. If you want to come in real short, uh, or grass or even sometimes some sand, Yeah. you can uh, lock them up and just, you're going to come, you know, stop real fast. How long did it take you before you really felt like really confident in your plane to go out and do something? So I would say, you know, roughly for me, I flew a lot. Um, I would say, about 20, 25 hours, I started getting a good feel for the aircraft. Sure. Um, but I also was in that hour, 25 hours was doing, you know, in, in one hour, I could probably do 20, 25 touch and goes. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Now, Clover Lakes are super fun. Yep. Thank you, Gary. I really appreciate that. Appreciate walking around and showing me about your airplane and stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. I got a feel. I did. I did. I did. Yeah.